Welcome everyone, this is Dan Lachendro on your left, and I'm Lou White, and uh, I've been under a little strain this week because my wife is still in the hospital, but I thought it would be a good thing to just talk to a friend, and Dan is one of the best friends, and uh, we're going to talk about Pentecost today. So Dan, what is Pentecost? Well, it's a, I believe it comes from a Greek word meaning count 50, Pentecost. But it's actually the Christian's word for Shavuot, which would be the Feast of Weeks. That always falls on the first day of the week after a Sabbath day, like the seventh Sabbath after the first fruit. Um, Christianity doesn't recognize any of the other appointed times or feast days, but they do this one, but they just call it Pentecost. Now, why is that? Well, because they only have enough rope to, I mean, they, they put out a, a stream of lies, and inherited pagan festivals, but Yahuwah only allowed them to do it so much, and then he put one of his own festivals in there, and it's a little truth that truth seekers will go after and find out, hey, wait a minute, this is one of the annual Sabbaths. Why are we doing that? Constantine forbid the weekly Sabbath. And, uh, you know. But, Basically, uh, it was the one, the one appointed time that was so in everybody's face that they really couldn't talk around it. So they had to address it and do something about it. Yeah, Acts chapter 2 and 3 deal with this. And, and it's so visual and it's so compelling. And Luke wrote the book of Acts and recorded the words of all the first Nazarim. <clears throat> and you know, uh, it was interesting when we were talking earlier today about the breath of Yahuwah. Uh, he, he breathed his esteem into the first man, Adam, and he became a living being in order to rule with the character of Yahuwah in him. Mm -hmm. And then Yahusha himself breathed on his pupils, his disciples, the, his breath, and he said, receive the Ruach HaKadosh. And that would be so that they could understand scripture and have his mind and his perspective, this is what it is. And, and it enlightened them. And then on the, on the day of what they call Pentecost, the 50th day from the first fruits, the resurrection, they received even more uh, of the mighty wind of the breath of Yahuwah. Yeah, a greater measure. 120, his, yeah. Yeah, of his Ruach, yeah. And I think that was a fulfillment of another prophecy, too, because uh, Ezekiel, or Yekeskel, and uh, Yermiyahu talked about that he would write his Torah on our hearts and in our minds. That's what it is. It's a receiving of a love for the truth, a love for the covenant. And so Yahushua enables us to not only empower us to love obeying, but to, to you know, literally perform his word, you know. Well, it's something we talked about uh, all quite a while back. We uh, briefly touched on it. The Torah was given at Sinai, yeah. but it wasn't accepted until Shavuot. Yeah, the it, giving of the Torah at Sinai is what Shavuot is really remembering, but they didn't accept it. They said, all that you say we will do and obey, like a bride. So yeah. it is about a wife responding to her husband and the receiving of the covenant of marriage. and But now now that his people have received his spirit inside them, then the Torah written in stone is validated. It's not right. rejected. It's still there. And we'll probably get to see it at the marriage at the marriage supper of the Lamb. But what we are in living reality, we've received something of infinite value in us, and that's his spirit so that we mm -hmm. love obeying him. And it's obedience that's required of a wife. That's right. You can't just and disobey. And it's like the difference between what Christians call the old, well, they use the word testament, Old Testament, New Testament, which really there is no such thing. There's the Old Covenant, 
and some of them call it the new covenant, but really it's the same covenant. It's the marriage ketubah, and the only difference is where it's written. It was written originally on tables of stone, and now the renewed covenant is that same covenant, but it's written on people's hearts. Let's take, we, we've taken it into our body. It becomes in our mind. We have Yahushua's mind in us. And we will walk in his ways and be his people. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> but there's uh, usurpers out there and, and interlopers that are trying to trick people and to believe that they can believe that he existed just like a demon would believe. He, they believe that he's one. And they tremble. But they aren't going to obey him. They're not given that much uh, ability. But when we obey him, he helps us. And that's what the gift is, is the gift of our belief. Mm -hmm. And then he enables us and helps us in, in our vessels. And we can actually act upon his words and see the, that they're good. Well, he told us when he was here on earth, he told us, taught once, he says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That was before he went up to heaven. So he had to leave in this physical form to bestow his spirit, his ruach, on his followers, on his believers. It's the same spirit. Okay, there's no such thing as a trinity. That's nonsense. Okay, even the demons know that. Yeah, they know but he's one. It's him. It's his presence yeah. in us. He said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. And... Uh, He's not left us. He's right. going to come back in the physical sense and all the world will see him coming. But we know, we see him. We understand him. And mm -hmm. he's enabling us to share his love with others through our words and others will believe. And That's where we have to become active participants with him. And everyone that hears and believes needs to be an active branch an active participant in this. Right, well, belief without work is dead. Yeah. It's a renewed covenant, and it hasn't changed. It's just how it works. Mm -hmm. It's in. It, it's actually in our minds, in our hearts, and we, we love his commandments, and his commandments are unalterable. It's an unchangeable covenant. Yirmiyahu 31, uh, I think I have a section here where it talks about that. <clears throat> For this is the covenant that I shall make with the house of Yisrael and those Yomim, says Yahuwah. I shall put my Torah in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. And it shall be there, and I shall be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall they teach each one to his neighbor and each one to his brother, saying, Know Yahuwah, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest of them, says Yahuwah. For I shall forgive their lawlessness and remember their sin no more. Now you can't continue to sin and say he'll, re he'll forget it. You have to repent and stop that. And intentional sin is not allowed. It's only the unintentional sins that are forgiven. Well, that's right. So, you know, this false Christian doctrine of being under what they call G-R-A-C-E, uh, you don't have to keep the commandments anymore because of that. That's, that's a lie. Yeah. And that's something that, uh, you know, that's just not going to stand. And, th and this will back that up. In, in continuing in Yirmiyahu or Jeremiah 31, it says, If these laws vanish from before me, and he means instructions. That's uh, another way of looking at laws. It says Yahuwah, Then the seed of Yisrael shall also cease from being a nation before me forever. Well, it's an unalterable covenant, but it's just processed in a new way. He's renewed it by indwelling us instead of writing it on stone only. Now we love the, co the covenant of marriage, and we can love him and love our neighbor. It's a covenant of love. It's a marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can't be an idolater any longer. You've got to stop and not worry about who your parents were or what they thought. It's... You know, you think about your parents, but you don't uh, maybe practice the same way of walking as they did. Because it's not about religion. It's a relationship now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
he inscribed a, a love for his Torah on our hearts and we're forever changed. We can't go back and say, oh well, I'm going to go back and, th and believe what my cr Christian pastor told me. No, that's, uh, that's a syndicate. That's a, that's a racket. Yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> no. He said, I'll give you a new heart. It's a Yekeskel, or um, Ezekiel. And, you know, it's interesting, Yekeskel, the one they call Ezekiel, his name means Elohim strengthened. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. And he says that, uh, in chapter 36, starting at verse 26, it says, And I shall give you a new heart and put a new Ruach in you. Receive the Ruach HaKadosh. And I shall take the heart of stone out of your flesh and shall give you a heart of flesh and put my Ruach within you. And I shall cause you to walk in my laws and guard my directives and shall do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I shall be your Elohim. And we will dwell in the land when he returns, because we're going to be the, we will be the new Yerushalayim ourselves, living stones. That's right. That's wonderful. None of that going to heaven living on a cloud now. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's replacement theology, supersessionism, dispensationalism, and the Circus Fathers just adapted a form of piousness based on their own form of sun worship and their formulas. But those weak and miserable principles that they, the first uh, Gentile believers had, Paul was worried about it. He said, have, have, you, have I wasted my efforts on you? You're falling back into your old weak and miserable principles. That's right. That's not what this is. What we live in is not weak and miserable by any means. It's no. it's powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, this this ignorance is 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 dispelling to a large amount. But uh, there's a lot of people that are coming to the knowledge of the truth now, because they're starting to read scripture and believing it and walking in that rather than their pastor's traditions. Well, I think some of them are asking the right questions, and yeah. they're not satisfied with the answers that they're getting because the answers that are spoon-fed to them, they're not, they're not making any sense according to Scripture. Mm. So, you know, people are getting hungry. They want to know, yeah. um, they want to know what's going on, mm. and uh, they're, they're searching, and they're paying people, uh, preachers and teachers, to reveal to them what the book says, the mm. truth, and they're being lied to. Yeah. Tired of that, I think. Well, you know, the, the, the liars will pick and choose, you know, using techniques called eisegesis. Mm -hmm. And they'll take case studies and they'll hold them up and say, look, this is where the apostles were meeting together on the first day of the week. Well, Acts 20, starting at verse 7, says the wrong thing. It's mistranslations. On the first day of the week is written in most translations, but it doesn't say that. It says, no. on the first of the Sabbath, Sabbaths, on the first of the Shabbat, Shabbatuth is what it is. And uh, it's in the count, the first of the, of the weeks towards the count to Shabbat or Pentecost. That's right. That's mm -hmm. what that is about. And they were meeting in an upper room, and there were many lamps in the upper room. So it wasn't anything like what Christians do. Uh, they meet together under a steeple, which is a forbidden object, mm -hmm. and crosses, old sun worship symbols, and they uh, meet in the morning, and they have a supper. See, these conflicts just are everywhere. But uh, anyway, the next morning, Paul left, and uh, he was headed to Jerusalem in order to be there in time for Shavuot, Pentecost. And you know, that was weeks away still, but he had a long journey to, to take, and that's that's part of the deception. They they don't want, they don't think you're going to study a whole context and look at Acts chapter 20 and see that at the very end of that, he's picking up on an, an idea, or Luke is writing it, but he's picking up on the rest of the, you know, idea. Mm-hmm, yeah. Let's see, I think I have a piece of that here. 
And it says, uh, <clears throat> and this is Acts chapter 22, picking up around chapter 16. Or Paul had decided to sail past Ephesus so that he might lose no time in Asia, for he was hurrying to be at Jerusalem, if possible, on the yom of the festival of weeks, which is what Christians call Pentecost. And it's interesting, we keep thinking about how that's the only actual commandment that, that, that Christianity has even recognized and that was put out there so that people that were truth seekers would say, hey, we don't keep any of these other festivals. You know, like, I'm going to hold up that card with it. It has, uh, you know, the festivals. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's there's seven of them, basically. But uh, the central one is this uh, this green one right here, Shabu Shabuoth. Uh, why would why would Christianity recognize that one, and not any of the others? See, so they've got a, a little a little bit of their um, their walk missing, <laughs> quite a bit of it actually. <laughs> yeah, I really can't get around that one though. No. Yeah. So we just gotta embrace it, I guess. Huh? Well, let's see. Uh, not to keep this getting too long, but we've got a <clears throat> Yahusha is returning for us as his bride. That's why he's coming back. He's not going to take us anywhere uh, off planet. He's uh, we're going to go with him wherever he is, and it's going to be as his bride. So we'll never be without him. You know, of course he's in us now as a partial uh, in habitation. And that's why we love him so much, and we're waiting for him. But th the second exodus is really going to be worldwide. And when he takes us from the nations, before the eyes of all the survivors, a remnant of the 12 tribes of Yisrael are going to be understood to be the bride. And mm -hmm. there will be others that will be saved later, but they're at, at the, a thousand years later. We will rule with him as a king and queen. His followers are going to be resurrected, and uh, it'll be just like the mixed multitude that was in the first Exodus. There was a mixed multitude there, you know, mm -hmm. people that don't know who they really came from, but they're believers. They're walking in the truth. But it says, "He shall." This is Yahshua 25. He shall follow. He shall swallow up death forever, and Aduni Yahuwah shall wipe away tears from all faces. And take away the reproach of his people from the Eretz, that's the earth. For Yahuwah has spoken, and it shall be said in that yom, See, this is our Elohim. We have waited for him, and he saves us. This is Yahuwah. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his deliverance. That's Yahusha. That's who's coming. And I thought it would be a good plan to put the idea that we were talking about the fact that no one really goes to heaven and stays off the earth after he comes back. What, what about that, Dan? Yeah, that uh, would be a good point to make here, too, because a lot of people um, are under this, um, this uh, idea that when he comes back the second time that they're taken up to meet him and then they go back to heaven. Well, but that's not what the scripture says. As he comes, he will he will receive him, receive us to himself, and we will be where he is. But he continues coming down to this earth and establishes his kingdom here. So we don't go to heaven, okay, at his second coming. That's a lie that's being taught by Christian teachers. That's right. If you just read the scriptures for what it says, very simplistically, you'll see that that's what's really going on. Yeah. And we know him, and we know that we know him because we guard his commandments. And we know his name. And we know his name. And he knows our name. Mm -hmm. You can't dismiss that. Well, thank you, Dan, for helping, you know, help maybe awaken some of these people. There's a lot of people out there that really love to hear you. Well, thank you for having me, Lou. You're welcome. Well, you all take care and keep his commandments. And we'll see you in the next exciting video. Bye.